Today's lesson is on roots and radicals. In this section, we will introduce a new category of expressions and functions that contain roots. For example, the reverse operation of squaring a number is finding the square root. So if we consider 3 squared, we know that 3 squared is equal to 3 times 3, which is 9. The reverse operation of squaring a number would be to take the square root of that number. The square root of 9 is equal to the square root of, and if we break down and think of this, uh, breaking it down with the factor tree, that would be 3 times 3. Then we know that the square root of 9 is equal to 3. The symbol that we use here to denote the principal square root is known as a radical sign. The number under the radical, in this case the 9, would be known as the radicand. Together we refer to this radical sign and the radicand as a radical expression. <laughs> so again, if we take a look at this slide on the left, the radical symbol is your square root sign. It can often be a cube root sign or fourth root depending on what is known as the index, um, what that value is. The radicand is the part under the radical and the whole thing known as the radical expression. One thing I want to add in here is that inside this is known as the index or the root that we're taking. When we look at this we say square root because it is understood to be 2. It will always be 2 unless it's stated otherwise. So let's take a look at a few examples. So if we first want to consider the cube root of 8, remember this time our index is 3, so we are actually looking for 3 of the same factor. Each time we rewrite the radical sign, we want to make sure that we carry over the index. So if we break down 8, we know it is the product of 4 and 2, and that 4 can further be broken down into 2 times 2. When I do my factor tree, I always underline all my prime factors. So I'm going to list all of these prime factors under my radical sign. So notice that 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8. Because my index is 3, I am looking for factors of uh, that can be grouped in, in a size of 3. So because I have 3 of them, I know that the cube root of 8 is equal to 2. If there was a factor left under the radical, I would continue to keep that under the radical. But since everything gets grouped, I know that the cube root of 8 is 2. Similarly, for the cube root of negative 8, I can break this down to a negative 2 times a negative 2 times a negative 2. And because I can form one group with three negative 2's, the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. The fourth root of 81, that's how we would say it, fourth root of 81, 81 breaking down to 9 times 9, which further breaks down to 3 times 3, and 3 times 3. I can now rewrite this with the prime factorization of 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Because I am looking for groups of 4 of the same factor, because my index is 4, I'll circle these 4, and they come out as 1, 3. I have one group of 3's. Similarly, I have one group of negative 2's and one group of 2's up here. For the next example, negative 4th root of 81, if I have a negative out front, then of course my answer here will also be negative. The square root of negative 36 is not a real number. The square root of a negative number is never going to be a real number. We will learn later about numbers called complex numbers. but for the time being, whenever we take actually an even root, so that could be a 2 as in a square root or a fourth root or sixth root, if we are ever trying to take 
an even root of a negative number, it will, the answer will be not real until we get to complex numbers. So next, let's move on to practicing finding these roots. For A, when we're looking at the square root of negative 16, remember we just said that the principal square root of a negative number is not real. So this is an empty set or no solution symbol. For part B, I want you to compare and actually contrast part B and part C here. We see that they have the same numbers here under our radical, but what we want to consider is that the square root of 144 plus 25 can be viewed kind of like a grouping under this radical. If we were to put parentheses around that indicating that we're, we were grouping according to order of operations, we would simplify anything in a grouping before taking the square root. So when we add 144 and 25, we get 169. And remember from the warm-up that the square root of 169 is equal to 13 because 13 times 13 gives us 169. With an understood index of 2, again, that means we're looking for two of the same factor, and we'll pull that out. So we have one group of 13s. So our answer is just 13. Contrasting that with part C here, we have the square root of 144 plus the square root of 25. We cannot add these because they are not the same radicand. That's a rule. We cannot add unlike radicands, not the um, radicands themselves. So therefore, we want to simplify each one individually. We know that the square root of 144 is equal to 12. And we know the square root of 25 is equal to 5. We find the sum, adding 12 and 5 to get 17. And that would be our answer. So see how B and C are different. Whenever the two numbers are being added under a radical, we consider that a grouping. And we want to simplify that first. Next, um, the next slide illustrates uh, that simply the square root of A squared is equal to A. So the same rules apply not just for numbers, but also with variables. And we'll do a few examples in right here. So on this next slide, part A asks us to find the square root of 45p squared. The rules with variables, again, are the same as with numbers. So the first thing we want to do is find the prime factorization of 45p squared. We can think of using a factor tree again. 45 breaks down to 9 and 5. I'm underlining 5 since that's my prime factor. And anything that can further be broke down, I continue to do so. So 3 times 3. Our variable here, p squared, can be broken down to p times p. So the square root of 45p squared, if I write all the factors out, we've got 3 times 3 times 5 times p times p. Because my index is 2, I want to form groups of 2 of the same factor. So I'm going to circle my 3's because I have 2 of them, and I will circle my P's because I have 2 of them. Think of this as being 9. The square root of 9 is 3, so only one 3 is coming out here. The square root of this 3 times 3, or 9, is 3, and the square root of P times P is P. So because I formed this, there's one group. So if you think about it, I'll put an exponent here to illustrate the exponent here would represent how many groups of the threes we had and how many groups of p's we had. Anything that does not get grouped up remains under our radical. So we don't need to put the two as our index. Remember that is understood. But anything left remains under the radical. So our final answer would simply look like 3p times the square root of 5. For part B, we have the square root of 200 m to the fourth n. I will expect that you can eventually um, write out all of your factors without having to do the factor tree. But also think, if you can find a factor that is a perfect square, then by all means, you already know that that will help you to simplify. In other words, I know that 200 is 2 times 100. If I write out under my radical 2 times 100, I know that I'm taking the square root of 100, which is 10. Again, if you'd like, you can write all of your variables out. 
So we have four m's and one n. And anything I can take the square root of, I will. Remember, 100 is really 10 times 10, so that's like forming my group of 10s there. Or recognizing that the square root of 100 is 10. I also can form two groups of m's, so that is going to be m to the second power. Remembering that my exponent represents how many groups of those factors I can form. I will then write my radical in anything that did not get grouped, here being the 2, and then the n remains under the radical. So my answer would be 10m squared times the square root of 2n. I'm going to come over here to do part c. If I'm looking at 6 times the square root of 72x squared, then I'm going to break down my 72. 72 is made up of the factors um, 8 times 9. 9 is a perfect square, so I'm going to write that. 8 breaks down to 2 times 2 times 2. And then I'm going to do an x and an x. So remember, if I want, I can do 3 times 3 also. Uh, so I want to simplify by forming groups. I have a pair of 3s. That's going to come out. So notice I'm keeping my 6 because it's already um, out here being multiplied by my square root. And I also need to multiply by a group of 2s and a group of x's. So we want to list all those out front, the 3, the 2, and the x. And anything that remains, this 2 here, stays under my radical. Whatever I have pulled out needs to be multiplied. So notice I have 2 times 3, which is 6, and 6 times 6 is 36. So I have 36x. I always want to make sure I put my coefficient in front of my variable. So 36x square root of 2 is my answer. Next for D, I have 8, which is 4 times 2, but 4 is 2 times 2. So I have 2 times 2 times 2, 2 p's, 3 q's, and 1 r. So if I find my uh, groups, knowing that my index is 2, that would give me one group of 2's, one group of P's, one group of Q's. Nothing else can be paired up. So we have a, a singleton here of 2, Q, and R. The 2 from right here stays outside. I multiply by the 2 that got paired up here, the P and the Q leaving the 2QR. Then I want to finish off by multiplying anything that can be multiplied out front. 2 times 2 is 4. PQ times the square root of 2QR. I'm all done. Next, we're going to learn that this also applies to cube roots. The definition of a cube root um, says that a real, if a real number a is written as the cube root of a and we set that equal to b, then b cubed is equal to a. So think about it as the 8 that we've already done. The cube root of 8 we said was equal to 2. That means that 2 cubed equals 8. When we want to simplify these, we need to remember that for any real number a, the cube root of a cubed is equal to a. In other words, the a cubed can be written as a times a times a. And similarly to the square roots, if we have cube roots, we're looking for groups of size 3. So I have three a's, so that means I have one group of a's a to the first power, again, the, in this exponent representing how many groups I have, but of course we don't put that, that's like an understood a um, one, so that would just be a. Next, if we want to simplify the cube root of negative 125, we first want to remember that uh, this negative basically will always come out. 
So if we can think of this as if it's an odd root, so that could be 3, 5, 7, or 9. If I put the negative out front, I won't have to worry about it. 125 can break down to 5 times 25. 25 to 5 times 5. Because again, I have an index of 3. I'm looking for groups of 3 of the same factor. So the cube root of negative 125 would be negative 5. Okay. So we'll move on here to the next slide on A. And we have the cube root of A cubed, B cubed. So A, 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 B, B, B. I'm forming one group of A's and one group of B's. So my answer is simply A, B. For B, I have the cube root of x to the fourth, y to the fifth. So really what you want to think is, by looking at it, there are going to be three x's, that, meaning I can pull out one of the x's, but one will be left inside. For the y's, since I have five, I'm going to write five of them, I will have one group of y's leaving two on the inside. So hopefully you'll get to the point where you can see that and save yourself some time. So if I write them all out, I'll have one group of x's, one group of y's, an x comes out, a y comes out, leaving an x and two y's, which I write as y squared. So x, y times the cube root of x, y squared. And we'll stop at this point.